Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. I'm gonna go over how to use gobos really quickly. I'm gonna do this in Redshift, but it's very similar in Octane or any other 3D application. So a gobo is a texture, it's grayscale, and you put it in front of a light and the light will pass through it and cast shadows of whatever this gobo texture is. And the cool thing is I've made a little texture pack with 35 different gobos and I'm gonna give you these for free. So I'll put a link below for how to grab them, but these will be completely free and you can go ahead and download these and play along. All right, so our lighting is pretty flat, so we're gonna add some interesting shadows to it. The way that you add a gobo is you have to add a light first and you can do it with an area light, but I like to use a spotlight. So we'll put it in a spotlight and it's off scene right now, so I wanna put it into a very easy to access spot. So I'm gonna drag it into my vase and then we'll go to the coordinates. And if you didn't know this, these little arrows here, if you right click on them, it'll reset them to zero. So just right click on them. And then this light will go to the vase. Now we can move it out of this vase and then we can access it right in our scene very easily. So here's our spotlight and we're gonna wanna position it sort of off frame here, but pointing at our hero object. So we'll do something like this. And now we have to put a texture in here so that it'll cast that shadow. So under that spotlight, under object, we have a texture slot and let's pick a texture. Maybe we'll start out with a window. So we'll drag that in here and we'll go ahead and hit no. And now we can see that our light is passing through this light texture and casting these window shadows. So if we wanna make this bigger, we can go to the cone angle and the cone angle of that light, if we increase it, it'll make our texture bigger. And it looks like our exposure is a bit high. So let's go to our physical sun and maybe drop that down a little bit. And then under that spotlight, we can also change the exposure on here. So it's not quite so bright. And then the other thing is that these are very harsh shadows and that probably wouldn't be happening. We probably have a lot softer of a shadow. So let's go to the details on that light. And there is a shadow section. And you might get confused because if you increase the softness, nothing's gonna happen. That's because there is this checkbox here you have to click, which says softness affects gobo. So check that on. And then if you play with the softness, you can increase the softness of that light. And you can see that if we turn this on and off, what a tremendous amount of detail and interest that light brings. So that's the beauty of a gobo. You can really make some intricate details in your shadows and make it look a lot more realistic. Let's demo a couple other of these gobos. So if we have these blinds here, you can see that we have these window blinds now, and maybe we could increase the intensity of that a little bit more. So now you have those great window blinds. We also have some trees, so we could add some tree leaves. And then another really cool one is we have some caustics. So we could add some caustics so that it looks sort of like pool water glancing up against the wall. And one other thing is that if we have a texture that we want it to repeat or tile, it's kind of hard to do, but there is a way that you can add more flexibility by clicking this add graph button. So if we hit add graph, then we can click edit graph and you can see that it set everything up, including this texture and spotlight in a graph setup. And this means that we can go into our texture and we have more options. We can also add nodes to this. So we can add like a color correcting node and change the colors but we can simply go to our remapping and we can change the scale to two by two and then we can have it tile. So we can change the scale of that pattern. You can also add two gobos and mix them in here with this graph. So that just gives you a lot more flexibility. Okay, that's how to use gobos in Cinema 4D. Go ahead and grab this pack. I'll put a link down below. Enjoy it. I hope that you find it useful. Thanks as always for checking out the Pixel Lab. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.